Hi and welcome, my name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a look at some of the hidden gems in Photoshop CC 2017. You'll notice that this document has two layers. It has a text layer as well as a background layer. When I select the background layer and we look at the properties panel, it actually shows us the width and height of the document, although because we're on a background layer, we can't access them to change them. If I click on the lock icon, turning the background into a layer, now not only can we change the width and height here in the properties panel, we could also change the X, Y axis if this was, say, a smaller photo within a larger canvas. If I click on the Antarctica type layer, then you'll notice that the properties panel has some new options for typography in Photoshop. The idea behind putting more and more options in the properties panel is so that we don't have to manage so many different panels. Now you can do things like change the typeface as well as size and alignment as well as color, but if you do need more options, the advanced button right here will take you directly to the characters panel. And while we're on the topic of type, with the type layer selected, I'm going to use the drop down menu here in the properties panel to point out this font here, Trajan Color. So we now support SVG fonts within Photoshop. If I select this in order to apply it and then click and select a character, you'll notice that I have alternate characters for this font. So the difference between SVG and a regular font is that SVG allows for multiple colors within a font. It's not just an outline of a shape with a solid color fill. So we could change those using the glyphs panel. For now, I'll just escape out of there and we'll leave that in yellow. Now, I'll click down a little bit lower with the text tool in order to insert another text insertion point. And then over at the glyphs panel, I want to select a different font. In this case, I'm going to scroll up to the very top here and I'm going to choose Emoji 1. So right now in Photoshop, you can now type in all of the different emoticons or emojis that you see here. So as I scroll through the glyphs panel, you'll see all of the different emojis that you can choose from. Now I'm gonna move all the way up to the top here where we have these cyan circles with the letters in them. I'm going to double click on the A in order to insert that, but when I double click on the Q, instead of it typing the A and the Q, it's actually going to build the flag for Antarctica. So there's some cool things we can do there with the Emoji 1 typeface. All right, let's move to this next document so we can talk a little bit about the improvements made to artboards. Now you may or may not have come across this, but in previous versions, if you had a layer with a layer mask and you unlinked the mask from the layer and then you repositioned the artboard, unfortunately the layer mask did not move with it, but now it does. So there's no problem moving around your artboards even if those layers and the masks are unlinked. In addition, at the very bottom in the status area, if you set your status to layer count, you'll now get an accurate count not only of the layers, but also of the layer groups within your document. And if I select the artboard tool and we click on the gear icon here, there's now an option to shrink wrap canvas on save. So with this enabled, I'll choose file and save as and I'll just append this with an O2 and tap return. I'm gonna save this to the desktop, and if we switch to bridge and both of these layers are selected, we can see this one down here at the bottom. That was a document saved in the previous version, and we have the extra white on the left and right, whereas the one at the top, that's the O2 that I just saved, and there's no extra border area around the artboards in the image. All right, returning back to Photoshop, let's select this next file right here, and we can see that there are a number of different shapes here in my shape layer. I'm just gonna right click on one of those and show you that we can copy now not only as CSS, but also as SVG. And if I choose the edit menu, we can quickly select the same option by going copy special and then copy SVG. And the nice thing about this is if you copy the SVG and then you're working with an application like XD, you can actually paste that in as SVG, not as pixels as it was in previous versions. Versions. And a few other features that I just want to mention in previous versions, the face aware liquify feature tied, uh, for example, both eyes together when you were making changes to one, it would make it to both of them, and now you can separate that. So, for example, someone like me who has one eye smaller than the other, if the smaller eye isn't facing the camera, then I can go ahead and enlarge that independently of my other eye. 
In addition, in Select and Mask, there's a new lasso tool that should make making selections a lot easier. And if you're a person who exports a lot, well, those settings in the Export As dialog are now sticky. Oh, and one thing that you might or might not have noticed, when I was selecting different layers in Photoshop, you'll notice that my highlight is now blue, and that's because I went under the Photoshop menu to Preferences and then to Interface, and we now have this option right here for the highlight color. So there you go, a lot of new hidden gems in Photoshop CC 2017. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.